Hello and welcome to the Thursday, May 9th, 2019 edition of the Sands and Earth Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from San Diego, California. In case you're ever running out of interesting malware to analyze, Pratt has a new game for you, Email Roulette, that he's playing using VirusTotal's Threat Intelligence Service. With the service, he went through recent submissions and found an interesting email in Korean that then included ransomware. Brad also shows how to actually get the email message that belongs to the particular attachment that was flagged by these antivirus engines. The malware itself turned out to be yet another version of Gantt crap, which is sort of one of the big ransomware families going around today. And ESET Security came across an interesting stealthy backdoor in Microsoft Exchange servers that they're calling Light Neuron. Now, the trick here is that this software installs itself as a mail transport agent, so it really is a module in that way in Microsoft Exchange running as a system. Once installed as a mail transport agent, this particular module has access to all emails, it's also able to send emails via the exchange server and uh, this is also then used as a command and control channel. In order to send a command to Light Neuron, the attacker has to send, for example, a PDF or a JPEG that will include instructions for Light Neuron that it will then execute. So for a mail server, this is way more stealthy than anything else like HTTP requests or DNS and the like, because, well, uh, you would expect a mail server to receive and send email. And the emails themselves, of course, look just like any other email, just that they have this JPEG or PDF attachment, which again, isn't in itself all that suspicious. And to further evade detection, Light Neuron is also quite selective in what emails it will actually crap and forward. Apparently, this particular malware has been going around for about four years now without really being discussed discovered and described much in the public. And the images and PDFs that are being used to transmit these messages are still valid and can be displayed in standard viewers. ESET found this particular malware on a Microsoft Exchange server. However, strings within the malware refer to sendmail and postfix, so it's very possible that similar modules are being used for these mail transport agents as well. Of course, Unix mail software like Postfix and SendMail also has the ability to filter emails using external prog programs, and that's uh, sort of exactly what this malware is built to do. Now, as far as the defense goes, the best thing probably is to audit your mail servers, making sure there is nothing running on the mail server that's not supposed to be there. This particular malware is probably tricky to spot by just looking at mail logs or looking at traffic to and from your mail server. And if you're using the Linux Alpine Docker image, uh, time to double check if your root user actually has a password. Apparently, until recently, the image that was commonly shipped did contain an empty root user password, so just entering no password would get you logged in. To make things kind of worse or maybe a little bit sadder is that this originally happened in 2015 was fixed back then, a test was being added to make sure it doesn't happen again. Well, uh, last year, uh, this test was removed as part of streamlining some of the regression testing and sure enough, it happened again and this Linux distribution, again, only as a Docker image, shipped again with an empty root password. This problem is exploitable as long as you're using, for example, Linux PAM for authentication or any authentication mechanism that uses the local Etsy shadow file. 
And WordPress in its uh, most recent update, that's version 5.2, added a very important feature in order to provide more secure automated updates. Future updates will be digitally signed. This was a long-standing issue with WordPress that it did not digitally sign its updates. So an attacker who would be able to get a man in the middle position or would be able to compromise one of the WordPress distribution servers would have been able to then include a malicious update. This is of course in particular important since WordPress runs about a third of the 10 million most visited websites. Well, and that's it for today. So thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.